Hello and welcome to episode number 166 of The Shine Show. Today's episode, you're going to learn how to create your online course faster with my friend Gina Onetivia. I met Gina way back in November 2017 on that life-changing trip where I saved up and saved up and saved up to buy my airplane ticket to go to San Diego to meet Amy Porterfield at her live event, her first live event for B-School students back then. It was a truly life-changing experience for me, um, investing in myself, taking the time away from my little toddlers and babies and flying 30 hours door-to-door from Perth to San Diego then. But it really did change my life. I signed up for clients and I came home and I quit my job. And Gina is one of the people I met at that event. She was working with Amy back then. We have been close ever since. We catch up every time I'm in San Diego. Uh, she is just a wonderful person. And she has her own professional, well, her own business, helping online course creators map out their online courses. Uh, so it's so fabulous for me that people like Gina exist because like me, maybe you're struggling with outlining your course. Maybe the marketing piece comes easy for you. It's the teaching piece that's not so easy. And if that is you, you're going to love today's interview. So stay tuned to hear my interview with Gina. Giving up your time and freedom to make money is so 2009. Hi, I'm your host, Salome Shellac, and I help online course creators launch, grow, and scale their businesses with Facebook and Instagram ads so that they can make more money and have an even bigger impact in the world. If you're ready to be inspired to dream bigger, launch sooner, and grow your online business faster, then tune in because you are ready to shine And this is The Shine Show. Gina, hello and welcome to The Shine Show. So excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. You are so welcome. Uh, You and I go way, way back. Way back. You were at Amy Porterfield's live event that changed my entire life and made me quit my job and go full on, full in. Love it. Love it. Yeah. The fin- the finished event, right? Was it the finished? Yeah, well, it was the B school. It was the first B school live event. Uh, you did you and I did video testimonials for her B yes, school. Yes, that's right. Okay. Lo- wow. Yeah. yeah. So at Way that back. event, I um signed up for clients and came home and quit my job. Oh my gosh. And you are the juggernaut today. I am the juggernaut. Of that I will take it. You call me the juggernaut all day, any day. I love it. Oh, there will be many wonderful adjectives coming out as part of this interview. Let's Bring go. It. <laughs> well, I have just been a fan of yours and I love everything you do. You know, I'm a practical, like hands-on, just like yes. you. Like, I just want to get my hands dirty and do stuff. Yes. And you are such a great course creator and you help so many people get their courses out of their heads and into the world. But tell us just a little bit of your journey. How did you get to do what you do now? Yeah. So uh, I have Amy Porterfield to thank as well. And uh, we used to work together at Tony Robbins and used to boss me around all the time. (laughs) And I was, I was pregnant with my son, Tristan, and uh, I was about to give birth to Tristan. And she says to me, you know, when you take maternity leave, you don't have to go back. You can quit your job. You can go into courses. You're great at them. They're the future and build a business. And because Ames said that that day, that's exactly what I did. I quit my job. Tristan was three months old wow. and I went into, and I went into building courses. So, uh, so there you go. Ames inspired both of us. I mean, how could you not be inspired by her? Right. Yeah, and absolutely. The rest is history. So just really double down on course development and course creation. That's fantastic. Do you have a background in education or how did you just become so good at knowing how to put things in a course? From working from Tony Robbins. So I got to build courses for him for five plus years in the studio and just learning from Pam Hendrickson, worked for him for 20 plus years. She's an absolute genius learning from Amy and just getting hands-on training. And, And then that's when I learned about marketing as well. 
Mm-hmm. And so I got to benefit from the content creation and the the marketing aspect. It was it was incredible. Like I I think back about that education and uh, and how intense and how and how much I learned, and I'm so grateful. Oh, that's so beautiful. That is so, I love that. And you know, that just, I genuinely believe that when, when we, um, we have to like lean into whatever it is that we're learning in our jobs yes. and in life before we leave, before we get to this entrepreneurial journey, because I, I can tell you, I use every single thing from every, even the suckiest job, even from being a waitress, <laughs> like I would say I apply stuff today from those jobs and you just it's because you just have to you just have to like integrate it into yourself and then you go oh hang on there's something here I love that I love and you can hear it in your podcast too how you brought that perspective to to each and every topic I love I love hearing how your mind works oh thank you my mind is a weird and wonderful place (laughs) (laughs) so you and I had a little chat and talked about some of the biggest mistakes that online course creators make when they start trying to pull out the information that's in their heads and putting it into a an online course because we all start our online courses business because we believe we have something to give yeah. we have a creative passion and we have knowledge that will um, help other people and we want the money we want yes. to be paid yes. for the knowledge that's in our heads So let's talk a little bit about some of the biggest mistakes you see online course creators make when they start trying to pull their knowledge out of their heads. Yeah. So I think first and foremost, and you you said it, that I think a lot of times we say, I have a passion for this. I'm going to create a course on it. And that's great. I love passion. I love excitement. But what you and I both know that they need, and I know you talk about this, is validation, right? They need, you need to know that you have an audience not only that you have an audience that wants to listen to you, but that wants to put down their credit card for you. And I know you talk about this and, and to do that validation, do those Mm. interviews. Like I'm a big fan of getting on the phone and talking Mm. to people and talking through and asking them, you know, would you, what have you used before? What solutions have you tried? Uh, Would you try something like this? Would you pay this price point? What other things have you paid for? And really drilling down on, is this your person? Is this your audience? And do you have a buying audience? And I think sometimes we shy away from that because we think it might kill the dream, right? Yeah. 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 And oh, and, and it's that self-honesty of like, mm-hmm. yeah, we're too afraid to do it because we're afraid it'll kill the dream. But man, wouldn't you rather it kills the dream before you spend a hundred hours on the dream? A hundred percent. Right. I would rather know now because I've had failures before. Mm. Like I know, like, right. So we've all been there. And I was just talking to one of my mentors and she was saying that somebody spent, you know, 50,000 one year or whatever and stuff. And and then they're saying, is this, is this all there is? And it's like, you've got to hang in there. You've got to like invest. Right. But you also have to do your research and you've got to figure out who your audience is and that niche audience that I know you talk about that we're not looking for, you love Seth Godin as much as I do. I think Seth Godin, the master of marketing. And he says, don't go for the ocean, go for the swimming pool, Yeah, right? You're passionate (laughs) freaking swimming pool. That's what you need, especially when you're starting out that niche, that, that passionate corner that you can speak to. Yeah. And I see that, especially now in the ads environment as well, where the algorithm doesn't know if it's coming or going. Mm. And so the only, the best way to really get in front of people is to be able to speak to that specific person in her language or his language and like make them go, oh, who is this person reaching out to me through my magnificent phone on this app that where I binge watch videos. Yeah. And then digging and digging into that pain. I have an, I I have an example. I have an accelerator student who uh, wants to work with people who uh, they have an unhealthy shopping habit. So I was like, oh, explain that to me. What does that look like? She's like, well, there's piles everywhere. First of all, Gina, And then when company comes over, you're the person who has to close the door because you have that spare room that is just crap that you've shopped. And I was like, you're kidding me. And I was like, what's the lowest point? And she goes, when you lie to your husband, because yeah, 
the, I'm getting chills right now. She's like, when I lied to my husband about how much I bought, I'm like, you need to use that on your sales page. That is absolutely yeah. genius, right? And you could feel the pain. You could hear it in her voice. And that's speaking to your person. That's yeah. the kind of like digging you need to do. I love that. Yes. That pain. And and sometimes sometimes we can be so close to it when we're still in it. Yes. Um, that we can't hear it. And we think we, we, you know, when you're also when you're out of it and you're creating a course, you just think about all the things you want to give that person and all the things that person needs to learn and all the things that person needs to understand. Yes. And, and it's it's almost hard to learn that restraint to hold back on what they need and and just build that pain and just make them feel really seen and heard and acknowledged. 100%. 100%. And then and then she needs to call those people, right? Yeah. And say like, "Okay, I understand your challenge because she's she's one of her avatars, right? Yeah. And she knows her solution mm. and she's got a system, but will you buy this? Yeah. Or do you want I was like, "You got to call them and say, "Do you want a community? Do you want a paid community?" Or do you want a program or both or, or coaching calls? What does it look like, mm. right? Find out and dig into that. You know, there's a, a, a solution. There's a, a real challenge, an urgent challenge and a solution that you provide a unique solution, but mm. she needs to dig in on what does that look like in terms of delivery. And then yeah. we need to do that kind of validation. Yeah. And the other piece that I say to my students is once you do those calls, I always tell them to transcribe them because, yes. because in those calls are the exact words they need to use on their sales page. And often if we don't transcribe it, you just try to go off of memory or off of your yeah. notes, then you've actually filtered their words through your brain and through the I meaning love that. of it. Yeah. And so I have stacks and stacks of transcriptions from calls and I go through it with a highlighter. That is so smart. You know, I get so many things transcribed and I oftentimes, you know why? It's from my Tony Robbins days. <laughs> and so the, Tony would dictate for two hours, yeah. right? So, <laughs> and if you, you don't get the detail down and there was no time to go back to the audio or get it transcribed. Yeah. So we learned to just get the damn action item. But I love that tip and I'm going yeah. to use it. I'm going to tell my students to do that because you're exactly right. Because we write down what we hear, right? Yeah. Like the actual words that they're using. Love that. And and if you've if you if you've done a 15 minute call, by the end of 15 minutes, you forgot what exactly they said. Mm -hmm. And also because you're coming to it from trying to hear what you want to hear. Yes. And then right. like you've got some preconceived notions. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. I have an expectation that they're gonna say this. And what nine times out of ten, they turn you yeah. upside down. Absolutely. Right? Which is amazing. Yeah. We did this with A-Lister after the first time I sold it because A-Lister originally was a list building course, right? Okay. Yeah. And then I did, I got a bunch of uh, the students together in uh, in a in a Zoom session and I just like did that with him and I was like, no, but what was your real pain? What was your real pain? What was your real pain? Good. And I didn't still on the course, I was like still on the call. I was like, yeah, list building, list building, list building. And when I transcribed it, and I looked at the sentence that kept coming up, they would say, I hate list building. I don't want to do list building. List building sucks. I'd rather go to the dentist. I'd rather change the tires on my car. And when I said, what do you want? What do you want? What do yeah. you want? They all said, I just want to finally find people who wants to buy my thing. And I was like, uh, oh, you okay. need list building but you want to find people online who wants to buy your thing. So how and to it find makes, the ideal student then and convert. Yeah, okay. just, yeah. I just want to find people. And it's like, oh, that's what you want. And we just had to change the promise on that course and then and add a few bonuses that taught them how to sell for the first time. And voila, there you go. Such a great example. Yeah. Right? Or yeah, we have, we have notions or we think or you know, that might've been accurate two years ago, right. Or mm. years before that. Mm. And then people, and people shift, yeah. right. Your yeah. business shifts. Yeah. Also. Yeah. And then that you your audience is shifting right now. So we're going through that there exact ex exercise again to go now Amazing. post COVID. Yes. yes. What does she want now? Yes. Same thing happened with my accelerator program that I launched before, co well, during COVID, during mm. the pandemic. And they definitely wanted something different during that. And like in terms of community and coaching, a hundred percent than where we are today. 
That is so smart. So just a reminder, you know, you got to keep surveying them. You got to keep asking them and having the pulse of where they are. So smart. And it's like an onion. You're just going to peel the layers. You just, you think, you think you're going to get there and then you get there and then it changes on you. And then it changes again. And then you got to start working. Yeah, do it again. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's where the growth is. And that's why I love doing like one-on-one calls too. Like I still do one-on-one calls. I still do, uh, you know, brainstorming calls and things like that. Cause I always learn something new Mm. and I get great stories too. Like people, you know, when, cause a lot of times I get, you probably get these calls too. Uh, that, you know, they tried all these different things. Right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I tried this. I was like, well, where'd you get that? And it's like the interwebs, you know, and they tried different, uh, and sure enough, you know, it hit a roadblock or for some mm-hmm. reason, but it's fascinating to me, the paths that de- p- different people take yeah. the stories they have. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get to use them in your webinar and in a hundred percent everywhere talking about the course promises like so they start with like interviewing people finding out exactly what how they describe their pain how they describe their desires and then getting to a place where you've built the course but 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 like how do you how do you communicate that transformation yeah so a lot of times i think another mistake that we make is maybe we do that validation and we're like got it got my audience I know they're going to spend money. I'm just going to go start scripting the damn thing, right? I'm just going like to dive right in. And there's a few more steps that I want you to think about before you just jump in there. And one of them is you're exactly right, the course promise. And I love the course promise because it really drills down on what the result you're providing. And that, like you said, transformation, okay? Mm-hmm. And so with the course promise, you say, I'm going to take this person and be freaking specific, right? This mm-hmm. is, you've done the homework. So you're not just saying abroad, I'm going to work with a uh, stay-at-home mom. Okay, come on, dude. Like that is very broad. Does she work? How old are the kids? How much money does she make? What does she really want? Like, why does she want you? Okay, so drill down. So it's that specific person, your niche, your swimming pool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that person from feeling X, so before. And if you've done those calls, you know, they're lowest of lows, right? And I should say, Salome, that people do desire too. So not everything Mm. is about a pain Mm. point, Mm. but, um, but usually it's the pain point. So uh, usually we're digging. I think the thing with that is they, I think they, you know, we do more to get out of pain than we do. We have, we are more motivated to get out of pain. Than yeah, we okay. are yes, 100%. To, to, to reach to our desires because desire. it's easy yeah. easier to sit on the couch yes. and you know watch the boys <laughs> we, yeah, I, we're watching the boys yeah oh, <laughs> i know it's so i love it intense. when i find another the boys fan because oh, that's yeah, we'll have to talk about that like later sick on a unique level yes <laughs> um we uh so yeah it's easier to watch the boys than to than to take action. get us into our desire but but we often move when we're uncomfortable we move correct right. yeah so uh so you're going to take your specific kind of person before and mm-hmm. think about the lowest of lows what do they feel really like frustrated mm-hmm. upset embarrassed uh think about that person who is hiding things in a spare room and yeah. that's the, and hide it from people coming over, right? Yeah. Lowest of lows yeah. to where they're going to feel after release, relief, confident, what elation, whatever it is after you deliver X result. So this is also where the rubber hits the road. I don't know if you can use that extra <laughs> yes. 50s expression. So because you have to give them a specific result. So yeah. a lot of times I get course creators that say, I'm going to show them a way to find happiness in themselves. Like, okay, that's nice. That's shiny and that's happy, but (laughs) that's nice. (laughs) How are you going to make money? Like if no one is like, are you going to give them the 90 day plan? And -hmm. this is like, right. This is where the specificity comes in. Mm -hmm. Are you going to teach me? So for the woman who is going to help me stop my poor shopping habits, I'm going to give you a 90 day plan to, uh, stopping, stop those piles and achieve a happier outcome. And she teach you how to gauge, engage with a nonprofit and start oh. engaging with them and donate your things and then start a relationship. And that's her system, wow. which I love. So yeah. I'm going to show you a path to do that. I mean, how much more specific and powerful is that than saying, I'm going to teach you how to clean out your closet. 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or yeah. I'm going to show you a better way to shop. Yeah. Like, actually, I don't really well, need that. My favorite or... is I'm going to get you out of the overwhelm. Out of the overwhelm. <laughs> right. And it's that's what? overwhelm. Like, and your I, car, I teach my like, students overwhelm. Is the, it's like nobody's allowed to say overwhelm. <laughs> Nobody's so allowed to use that in copy because that's I, that's the that's the lazy word. <laughs> yeah, no, I drive my students nuts because they know I come. They come to me with an idea. I'm like, okay, well, we're drilling down on who is this really for, yeah. and are they going to pay for it? And then, and then, what is that specific result you're going to deliver for them? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and this is by the way where a lot of people get tripped up in this result, and they try to do something that's too lofty, that's mm. too big. Like mm. I'm going to give you, and it's business courses a lot of times too, right? Like I'm going to give you the total guide to local marketing. It's like, holy, you know, that's a lot. Instead mm. of I'm going to give you a quick start to determine your keywords and then maybe like a couple of things for that, right? Yeah. That to me, that's a more tangible, doable result. Yes. 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 I love that. I just had that conversation with one of my VIP students where we were going over her $27 offer um, okay. that was fix my period. So she's a naturopath and she works with women with crazy periods. Okay. Fix my period. But for, for $27, 20, she's going to fix my period? $27, you're going to fix wow. my period. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. So um, she might get we, me we on just, the path. We, and I say to her, we can still use the same course. We're yeah. just going to call it something special. Something specific, smaller. Yeah, smaller. smaller. Yeah. Right, like that yeah. seems. Yeah, a little more it's involved. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. the ocean and the world, and the <laughs> like. Really, I've been dealing with this all my life, and you're gonna fix it for me. And you're gonna fix days? it in like uh, five yeah. minutes. No, yeah. so right. So same same piece applies, and then but it goes back to we feel this imposter syndrome. We feel like we have to give them everything, mm. and it's just not true. Yeah. Start smaller. Yeah. Think about what's that uh, smaller transformation you could provide for them. Then you won't get stuck. So many course creators get stuck because they overpromise. Yeah, yeah, and and I think that overpromise because it takes us it takes a certain skill to rein back. Yes, back. Yeah, it's right. hard. It is hard. It is yeah. hard because we are humans and we are, many of us are overachievers putting courses together and programs. You know, this yeah. And by nature, we want to, sh- we want to deliver the world yeah. and it's hard to say, okay, you know what? I do need to pull back here a little bit. Like that's hard for any of us mm. to do. And that's why like enlist a friend that you trust or a colleague yeah. or someone that, you know, has the sounding board for you who can say like, why the hell are you doing that? Pull back. Yeah. 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 So important. I have those, I have those friends, you know, and I'm mm. sure you do too. Mm. Mm. Do you think it's because, do you think it has to do with uh, us not knowing when we start how to take people on a learning journey? Do you question. think that's why we just want to yeah. throw everything at it? I think we we don't, I think it's a few things. I think it's, we don't know any other way. So I think when you have an expertise, you're like, I'm just going to teach my expertise. Mm. Why would I, why would I break that down? Mm. I'm going to teach my Mm. complete guide Mm. to Ayurveda. (laughs) What, right? Like my, my complete, my 15 pillars, right? To Ayurveda instead of, well, why not just do a a starter school? And and that's, I had a student do a starter school Mm. and then she can go into the cleanses. Like there's so much about Ayurveda. I don't even understand, but there's layers and layers. What is that? I don't know what it is. Ayurveda is a, a, oh my gosh, please write, <laughs> don't write in if I'm butchering this, but uh, it's an ancient Indian practice and uh, there is yoga and there is a way of eating and there's oh, doshas okay. and, yeah. uh, and I am the worst person to define Ayurveda. <laughs> You're going to have to put this on the show okay. notes. Uh, <laughs> this is laughable. This is a great yeah. story for later. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, I have learned something new that I still don't know what it is, but I have a vague vague idea. (laughs) You are not going to teach the course on everything about Ayurveda. Ayurveda. And I'm not going to show you what dosha, and it's all about. And you're also not going to create the starter body types. No, do not look, do not look for the Ayurveda (laughs) school of thought from Gina Nativia in 2023, guys. (laughs) Don't look for it. It's not happening. 
Yeah, it, but it, it but it is those starter starter courses for our students that work best when they start. Yes. So the yeah. right the point the miss uh, the miss state care is mentioning Ayurveda, but yeah. the point is start smaller. Yeah, right? you don't yeah. have to give them the school of everything. Yeah. Can you share with us the sticky note strategy for starting small and getting getting everything out of your head without throwing uh, the baby and the piano and the kitchen sink at them? <laughs> yeah. So the posted exercise process, I love doing this with my students and clients because it does take, it's that O word takes the overwhelm <laughs> yeah. out of out of course creation. We can take the overwhelm out. We just don't put it on. We coffee. can't put it in anything, right? We yeah. can take it out. Yes. So uh because a lot of times what happens is we want to go right into the weeds, right? So we like, okay, so say we do our validation, we have our course promise, then I'm just going to throw out everything against the wall and see what sticks. Yeah. So with the posted exercise process, you start with the overarching steps. The best thing about it is like you're starting with, so say you have, you all have a system, you're doing a course, you have some kind of system that works, some kind of process. That's why people are going to pay you the big bucks, right? Mm -hmm. So I like to say, start with a three, five or seven step system. You know, Mm -hmm. Tony taught us that like three, five or seven, like four, Mm -hmm. four is okay too. So you can do three, four, five, seven. Yes. And those are your overarching steps. Do not drill down. Mm -hmm. Until you know what are, so say we have a five-step course, Mm -hmm. define those five steps first, Mm -hmm. and then you can say, okay, did they build on each other? Is this the right path? To your point, is this the right flow? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we'll go back to module one. And then what are the videos or the lessons that they need for that? And Mm -hmm. then we can define those and then go through each module because Mm -hmm. that enables, that forces you to have parameters and to have a little bit of structure. Yeah. And restraint. Yeah. Around that's a, that's the great word for strength. It is. Around restraint. because we need that when we're organizing our course. Because mm-hmm. I've seen I've seen under strength courses. I've seen like those 15 module courses, you know, that are just out of hand. Yeah. And that that is not getting the transformation that you no. that your person really needs. You will scare them. They will not complete your course. They will not buy the next thing from you. You will not have a business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you will be hustling hard to keep making those mm-hmm. first sales. Yes. And we don't want that. We want yeah. you like building on your business and doing beautiful things, but and keep getting it beautiful testimonials as yes. well. Yes. And case yeah. studies. We want them getting across the finish line because that's right. That's how you get your case studies and that's how you mm. get your ambassadors and your raving fans. Yeah. So you do the posted exercise process to streamline what you're doing and then really question. Do I need this for the transformation? Do mm. I need this to get to the course promise? And if the answer mm. is no, you save it. You yeah. save it for something else. You save it for your podcast. You save it for yeah. content. You save it for a bonus or your next course. I love that. I love that. That's fantastic. Does everything um, Does everything in your content have to contribute to the course promise or can the bonuses be part of that? Yeah, the bonuses can definitely contribute. So uh, they take on, you know, they take on objections. Mm. And I think, and that's such a great question. No one's ever asked me that before. And here's the truth. The whole of the experience has to contribute to your course promise and you've got to get there. But listen, I've seen courses where people get to the course promise by module four and then five is like a whole teaser for the next course or it's a wrap up or it's, stuff you might need to know down the line, 30 days when you trip up. Right. Mm -hmm. But they've, they've already met the course promise. So that's a great question. And the answer is, as long as your experience leads to it in some way, Mm -hmm. then you can have bonuses that lead to it or whatever. There's flexibility in that as long as you're delivering for them. Yeah. I love that. Cause, cause like even when I'm teaching Facebook ads, you know, Facebook ads in itself is like a four or five module training. Yeah. But I don't want to just teach Facebook ads. No, of I want you because nobody just wants Facebook ads. Facebook they want ads. to make money, right? And and so then they need to learn how to make money, and that's right. a whole new module. And then they need to learn marketing, and that's right. a they whole need to learn new how to develop module. content or do the tech back end. Exactly. Or like, oh, so much stuff you could put in a Facebook ads course. Yeah. Yeah. So like Facebook ads is never about Facebook ads. It's about all the other things. 
<laughs> you know, it's so funny. It's so funny you bring this up because I was looking at a course the other day. It's a social media course, mm-hmm. and it is all about building social media. Mm-hmm. I'm, thinking myself, I'm thinking to myself, mm-hmm. this course needs some emotion. This course needs some, like exactly yeah. what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it needs it needs other stuff to balance yeah. it out. Yeah. You can't just show me how to set up an account and like do yeah. all these technical aspects. Yeah. You, lose, yeah. you lose your people. Yeah. And that's where like, you need to weave in stories and richness and Absolutely. examples and those case studies. Yeah. That's just as important in sharing yeah. that those technical information of yeah. setting up Facebook ads, right? Like in your back end, yeah. how to set up a business manager. Like it's yeah. not just about that. You've got to add that. Emotion about that. And, they, and there's a funny fine line because people... When people feel overwhelmed and they feel stuck, they want the step-by-step. They want the just show me how to do the thing. But just show me how to do the thing does not get you the result you want. It just gets you out of sitting feeling overwhelmed about the thing you want. I agree. And so cuz I remember I remember I I signed up for a $1000 a month mastermind from someone who specializes in social media. And I remember one day sitting on one of our calls and she did a special demonstration. Here's it. How to do plaid in your Instagram stories. I don't even know what that means. Should I know what that means? So plaid is like this, you know, plaid. The the, software? The the patterns. No, plaid is like the, the pattern that Scottish people have on their skirts. Yes. Locks, that's plaid. So how okay. to create a plaid look on your Instagram store. And I remember sitting there going, did I pay a thousand dollars What to know how to create plaid on my Instagram story? Save that. But I'd already, you know, and, and that was the <laughs> aha moment for me when I went, yes, I signed up for this because I want to learn how to use social media, but for a thousand dollars, teach me how to make money. Money on yeah. social media. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, oh yeah. The, pl- the plaid is not gonna make me money. Teach me how to make <laughs> money. The plaid, if you learn nothing else in this episode, yes. the plaid is not going to make you money. Plaid it's, is not where the money is. That's at. incredible. Yes. Yeah. But, and- but that but the, but that's an important, it was a really big aha for me because I teach something. So Facebook ads is plaid. If you okay. are just learning how to pull levers and how to push buttons and yes. you know how to create an image and how to add buttons, there's a whole world of other things out there that you need to know in terms of marketing and funnel building and bringing that audience and that offer and that launch mechanism together in a profitable way. You need to be like an algorithm detective. You need to be a marketing yeah. strategist. You need to be all yeah. these things like that. And that's what you're teaching people. Yeah. That's where the money is, right? So well, that's that where is- the big money is, but that's not that's not necessarily what they come to at the start. They don't come and yeah. say, make me an algorithm detective. They're like, oh, I don't <laughs> want anything to do with the algorithm. The algorithm sucks. <laughs> it does suck. Anyway, we uh, digress. But no, so I, I do you were yeah. you were saying that uh they don't go to how, how to something, right? So this is difference between a YouTube video and your course. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if yeah. They we're just going to figure out if I have a course on courses, right? Which I do. Uh, <laughs> they can just Google how to do a course outline and they can just yeah. watch a YouTube video. But if you want to hear case studies, if you want a journey, if you want a flow to a transformation and that emotion and the stories, you buy the freaking course. You're taking yeah. them on a journey. Otherwise yeah. it would just, Google YouTube videos. Like that's the, that's one of the differences. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes that journey is not necessarily equal to what they come to you for the first, in the first place. And there's, there's, there's mastery in being able to attract them to what they want and then giving them what they need in order to get what they really want. (laughs) Yes. Which right. Really what's their outcome. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So once you have your course outlined, you've got your sticky notes on your wall, you've got your five or or four or three or six or seven modules (laughs) (laughs) and you've put your lessons in there. How do you, so now you have an idea of your course, but you want to build your audience. So you're going to start with a lead magnet. Mm -hmm. How do you know what lead magnet to pull out of there? Yeah. Uh, such a great question because I, I, I've seen a lot of, uh, misled, misleading 
lead magnets, right? That either, I think a big mistake is people satiate too much. Like they have a topic of a lead magnet. That's their course. No, 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 no. So, uh, don't do that. Don't oversatiate your audience because they won't, they won't buy. Yeah. Right? A satiated audience yeah. does not buy. Mm. So, uh, I like to teach that where do they need to be in order for you to then sell them into your program. So I know before the show, we were talking about, I have a, a student, an accelerator student who teaches you how to convert to a vegan diet or like just get comfortable yeah. with it. And she gets a lot of people who are older and there's like, maybe they have heart disease, right? And their mm-hmm. doctor is saying like, you've got to switch things up. My mm-hmm. husband is like, he's having trouble with his liver right now. So we're kind of in process on this too. Mm-hmm. And she... I said a great lead magnet for her is uh, five ways to try out a vegan diet or a week, a week with a vegan diet and just try it out. Right. Yeah, that sounds uh, And just right. try it on, mm. try it on. And mm. because part of that lead magnet is getting somebody to dip their toe in the water. Yeah. And because by the time you get to selling your course, you don't want to convince somebody that vegan diets are the way to go. No, no, no. Yeah. So, like, so maybe they're dipping their toe in with your lead magnet. Okay, a week, and then maybe you're doing a challenge where you challenge them to take even more. Like you're cleaning out your closet, maybe mm. cleaning out your cabinet, mm. and you're doing swaps, and it's more mm. intense. Then that goes into that vegan diet lifestyle course. Yeah, like now you're ready. We, yeah. our job as marketers in the lead magnet is to take the first step and to get them ready to buy. I love that. Yeah, I love that. And so if you think about that in terms of that problem aware, solution aware sort of yeah. journey that they go on. Like you don't ever want to be selling to people who are not problem aware. Like you do not want oh, to that. teach problem people aware. Yes. that they have a problem. They yes. have to be acutely aware that they have a problem. So the doctor yes. has told you, you are going to die unless you switch to vegan. They are acutely yes. problem aware. Right. They are solution aware because they know mm-hmm. the solution is a vegan diet but they're not yet her solution aware. They don't know about her. Now they can go to Google and search 7,000 different solutions, but they're probably going to walk away feeling overwhelmed. And then they're just going to close the computer and go and cry because they have to give up their beloved meat. Right. But if she can take them on that little journey from being solution aware to becoming familiar with her solution that yes. seven days to becoming vegan or seven days to, days to trying racing. out trying yeah. out you know and it's so non-threatening and th- it's small so they know they can achieve mm-hmm. it and then yes. suddenly like if you can if you can show them a win there like now they're sold yeah, I, I love that. And this is where niche is important too, right? So mm. she's not trying to convince 20, 20 ish girls like, mm. to go vegan. She mm. knows her person's over 45, they're like at a risk, right? Maybe over 50. Mm. And, and maybe it's for the men, but we're the women, you know, the yeah. wives are going to buy yeah. it, right? Yeah. So we've got to speak to them, but then you're also speaking to the men. So this is why the niche is so important. And then yeah. they're going to be resistant. They're yeah. going to be, they're, they're not the type of people who are trying out different diets like this person. Right. So, but that's part of the criteria. Like, do they like paleo? Do they know this? No. Okay. Yeah. They're trying something. They're a meat and potatoes people. Yeah. Right. And that's yeah. important. Like those kind of details yeah. to know. And then you speak to them. Yeah. You say, okay. And you start slowly with them and then you get them down the line. But I love what you're saying yeah. about problem aware. You're right. Yeah. So yeah. it's the same thing like with uh personal development courses. Mm-hmm. Right. So you want them to know, you want them to be aware that they are ready for change or they're yeah. thinking about change. Mm-hmm. And then maybe they, they read your lead magnet or they watch your training. Maybe you have a mini course and they say like, I can do this. Cause that's the other thing, right? Yeah. You want them saying, I, I, can, I can do, do this. this. Yeah. I can do yeah. this. I can, I might be able to build a course. Yeah. Right. So by the yeah. time they get to me, I'm not yeah. convincing them that they can build, that they have a course inside of them. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're ready. So I just, you're absolutely right. I just got to convince them that I'm the girl for them. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that the time is now. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that. That is fantastic. Gina, I know you and I can geek out on this all day. All all night. Like all night. (laughs) All day, all night. Like we can keep going, but I just want to say thank you to you for being here and sharing your magic. You have so much magic to give. Where can listeners learn more about you? 
Yeah. So uh, I would love for you to check out my podcast and yeah. you need to be on, by the way. We'll talk oh, yeah. about that after. Uh, so Course Creation Incubator, you go to coursecreationboutique.com uh, slash podcast. Check it out. Listen in. If you want more course creation tips. I'm, I'm that totally is blessed. fantastic. I love that. You will find all of that in the show notes. Uh, so you can check that out and go and listen to Gina's podcast because uh, she drops as much gold as I do. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I try. Try. Yes. We both. (laughs) I think I think we do okay. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you so much, Gina. I really appreciate you being here. Such a pleasure. Thanks so much, Melanie. Well, there you have it. I trust you got so much value out of my conversation with Gina. I really could talk to her all day about online courses. If you loved this episode and you're a committed online course launcher who wants to learn how to grow your profits in your next course launch and you want to know how to successfully scale your online courses business to seven figures and beyond, then I'd love to see you inside the Launch Lounge. The Launch Lounge is the only community online that is dedicated solely to helping you develop every aspect of your online courses business so that you can build your business to scale. With no one-size-fits-all solutions, just the right education you need when you need it, coaching from our team of experts in different areas of launching and scaling, and the best community on the internet, the Launch Lounge is your online course building home if you want profitable launches that scale your business to seven figures and beyond. To get on the waitlist for our next enrollment season, go to shineandsucceed.com forward slash launch.